Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. Right, let's continue our research into repairing these ballast units that you get on many different cars, Mazda, BMWs, but more famously Land Rovers because they seem to be the most expensive if you're buying this part for a Land Rover. So it depends on the part number. And you can see now I've got some spares and I've got some spares for hopefully uh, the compa compatible with this one. So this is an L2910SZ, but this is a, a two, well, it's saying, is that a nine or a three? It looks like a nine, yes, 2910, but in the other footprint. So we're gonna try to swap out some of these components. But first I just wanna show you how I'm, I'm testing these. I've built a test rig here. Um, I say built, I've more or less assembled one. But I've got a uh, headlight cluster which uses these and I've basically hardwired it in to use some uh, jump start type lead so I can hook up a battery. So I can hook up a battery. So a bit of a tongue twister there. It's a bit cold in the back office here. But I'm gonna hook that up to see what happens, to show you what happens. It doesn't do anything because I don't have this connected at the moment. So you get the ballast unit. You can see it's there with its circuit board. And what I do is I just plug it in while everything's off. So I don't want to get a high frequency, high voltage into my fingertips. And then I just power it up from here, which is just off the screen, with the battery here. You'll hear a, a buzzing and a whining. And uh, I'll try to turn this over in a very careful way. And then you'll see there's the light. So what tends to happen, I've noticed, if you've got a, a dodgy ballast, I'm just going to hold it sideways, you can see my hand here, is that you'll leave it running, but after a while, I think once it all starts warming up inside the uh, electric pack, these start flickering, and when these start flickering, then they'll eventually go out, and that going out is obviously what you're trying to avoid. That's the sort of sign of a duff ballast. What I'm gonna do though, before I, I jump into that, I'm going to uh, take this ballast, I'm not quite out, but what I wanna do is try to get a flear on it, because I wanna see at what point it starts flickering. I'm gonna set a timer and all sorts of stuff, and uh, you know, we might do a you know, jump cut to that or a time lapse, but we'll see if that has an effect. I'm still not quite sure on the failure mode exactly. And the downside of this, you know, being a 1200 volt unit is you can't really probe it easily while it's running. Um, and not only that, you can't really take this off the board. It's kind of glued to that heat sink on the back. So if you do peel it off, by the way, you will damage some of the components here how, where they're actually bonded to the, um, heat sink. I mean, we might have to do that anyway if we want to try to replace that part, but it's going to be tricky. So I'm hoping we'll um, we'll run it, and then what we'll do is we'll flip it over and look at the flare of this bit of the board after it's been running for a moment. And that should show us which components are sort of warmer and taking most of the load. That's actually the coil. Hmm. So this bit here says it's 30. Oh. Interesting, oh yeah. Doesn't seem, doesn't seem particularly warm at all. I mean, I don't know what, it, it's, it's so hard to see if something really goes out of spec. But what I'm gonna do, let's just have a little play. When I've uh, checked these on other units that have been running basically in the car, though, I've seen a lot of warmth around this pick particular component sometimes these and you can see this this is uh, an epcos um, component here but so is that so actually made together what i'm going to do is take this out of here and we'll see on the deck if how closely that matches to the unit the brand new one we've got over here and actually we've got an, an old unit as well so we've got all sorts to try um, and that, for that test i'm going to be using our sort of quick testy type thing we got there going. So while our soldering iron is heating up, I'm gonna get out a brand new fresh one of these. And I'm just gonna write on here, OU, old unit, old unit. Because we don't want to uh, get these all mixed up use because some of them I've been experimenting on so you'll see like a bit of solder on on here where I've been messing so 
we can easily get confused. And then let's see what we're going to need to test these because we can't, of course, shove them straight in. So what we can do is, for example, if I put this on pin one, I'm going to put a lead in pin two. So if I hold this there and then I push the test button, we'll have a little read, see what we get off there. Our M tester is running. Six nine six. I'm going to run it one more time. Six nine one, right there. Sorry, I just got confused. I could have this this big um, sort of this smell, this strange smell in the back of it. I was like, what the heck is that? And it's where I've turned on my soldering iron, um, and uh, it, I was doing something naughty with it earlier on a material I shouldn't have, and it was the smell of that plastic burning off. So the uh, the new one was six nine one, six nine six six nine one, and we're going to run. Uh, we're going to run the old one. This was out of another one of these. Seven oh six. Seven oh seven. I mean, I think arguably that's kind of within tolerance, isn't it? Let's try the other new one we've got. Six nine six. Come on. Six nine eight. Yeah. To be fair, that that uh, that does look a little bit high. So let's take off this one we've got right here and it's a little bit tricky getting these off because we're going to be desoldering it from the uh, top end here because of that massive heat sink that it's connected to that is the case so I'm just going to hold the soldering iron on the leg with a bit of blob of solder on it to act as a sort of medium for transferring the heat through and just see if we can get that leg out Ooh, come on now we can. We've got to get it up just like that. And it's worth noting which is the positive and which is the negative. If you want, you can actually write that again on the board here. There's a negative here and a positive here. Let's turn that around. So we know again what this one should be. We'll pop that in. We're gonna. I'm gonna pop it in the exact same way, with the same polarity and everything. Okay. So we're gonna test that one there. I did it again because I slipped off there. Ah, what am I seeing? <laughs> It's uh, it's getting confused. I wonder if it's because I've got this thing sticking up here. Seven nine seven. ESR one point two V loss one point one. Again, just for sanity check, I'm going to do the uh, new one. Six nine six. ESR one V loss one point three. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I think maybe maybe that is the sign of these things getting a bit uh, old. Right. So that's fine. Now <clears throat> we can just swap those anyway, and we, we know that's probably going to do the trick. But that there's no that's the sort of least interesting part of this. More interesting is the fact that we've got this replacement MOSFET, and we want to replace that part. And that part is of course a surface mount part. So uh, it's going to be tricky in many ways because it's going to be tricky to just take that bloody thing off. The reason is, it's again, a lot of, lot of heat 
getting sunk into that on the board. So I think let's try. I don't really want to ruin this, by the way. These are expensive, and I'm not sure this was particularly not working. I think it was maybe on the edge of tolerance. Um, so you don't want to damage these if you can help it. So I'm just going to try to lift the legs first. And to do that, I'm going to take some cheap, very cheap tweezers, because we're going to probably use those as a, as a lever, really. And I just want to get them under the leg, applying a bit of pressure. It's actually bending the uh, tweezer leg, which is showing you how good a, qu a good a quality those tweezer legs are. But that's one leg up. So you can see there, I've just got one foot up. And the tweezers are looking a bit crap. They always were. And I'm going to do the same now again, if I can, on the next one. Getting uh, interesting fumes from uh, this uh, soldering iron. I really uh, shouldn't have uh, used it in the way I used it. So I use it to sort of bond some uh, plastic together, which uh, is asking for trouble really. So that's the second leg. So now we've got the two component legs up. And I don't really particularly, I'm gonna damage this taking it off, but I'm kind of, I don't think it's broken. All right, in all honesty, I don't think there's anything wrong with this component, but. I'm just doing it for the uh, for the sheer practice of doing it. Now, something I could do if I really just wanted to try to get it out and I definitely didn't want to damage anything else is that I'd probably try to get a pliers on here or uh, vice grips and just crank the hell out of it. You know, just smash it, smash the um, plastic off. Um, and I'm not saying that isn't something I won't have to resort to, but I want to just see what we can do with a standard iron. So I'm going to just check the iron. Put the iron right up to maximum. Woo, 480. Right, so it was from three, uh, 350 before. Now it's on 480. So it should start getting hot here. And you'll see in there that at the moment it can't actually, the solder isn't sticking to the material of the components heatsink. It doesn't even melt. Hopefully that will change as we start putting the heat up on the soldering iron. Yes, now the soldering iron is up to 480, so it is starting to. Um, again, just going to hold it there. I don't. And the problem with this component, you can see, you can't get the iron in sideways. If you get the iron sideways on there, there's a sweet spot on this iron, which is halfway along that tip. Um, which we'll be able to just dump a bunch of heat into that, but I'm just not going to be able to do that right now. So I'm just going to kind of experiment a little bit. Maybe if I can get the iron in, trying to again avoid all those other components that's sitting so near this thing. And I'm just ho holding it straight on the casing, straight on the package. Come on, let's get some heat into this thing. Now I have tried with hot air to lift this and it does cause a lot of damage to the surrounding components so I wouldn't advise that. Unless though you can make a, a sort of shield using I don't know tin foil or bits of metal whatever you've got you might be able to make a, a small shield for it. No nothing you can see look it's just come on now just holding it there Nope. So we're going to switch up to gas and I've got this wedge shaped bit I've never actually used but that looks kind of like the a really uh, brute force type tip so let's see if that'll give us some joy. The nice benefit of gas, I don't really like this particular iron so much because it's just bulky and weird to use. Um, however you bloody do use it. Safety lock. Is that right? Is that lit? See what I mean? It's such a weird... I think it's lit. Yes, it is a lit. Good.
Yeah, just got to be careful. You've got an exhaust right here. So wherever that thing's blowing, it's putting bloody a lot of heat out and you can melt stuff. So just watch that. It's always in the wrong place, by the way. All right, let's see if we can tin this. Oh, yes, that does tin rather nicely. Instantly cooled down. I want maximum power, please. Hi, hoo. Yes, I'm just sitting here trying to pump heat into this device. Just goes to show you how effective it is. It's like pure heat sinking. It's not even boiling off. Boiling off the actual flux there. We'll just put that away. I think it really didn't achieve as much as this one did. Right, so good. But now we're down to the, the worst case scenario and you're like, well, okay, you've tried that. You've tried the other stuff. You can see here you've got solder that doesn't even stick to it, doesn't adhere to it because it's so well um, thermally uh, good. So I think what you have to try to consider is trying to destroy the component uh, like that. But being very ginger, you want to destroy the component, but not the board or not the PCB or anything like that underneath it. So very careful. And if you want to do it with more control, mini vice grips. I do have some somewhere, but at the moment I'm going to try to do without. But mini vice grips are always recommended. This will stop us testing this component. Now that's the downside. It will be tricky when there's no component left to test. Munching it away. <laughs> Let's clean up as we go along. <laughs> nice. It's definitely starting to look a bit the old munch. Probably could do with a smaller pair of munchers. Uh, slightly smaller pair of munchers. Indeed. Try not to twist it. But if you twist it, you're definitely going to mash up your pad somehow. Urgh, come on! That's needing some crunch. And be careful when uh, when it goes. If you've got a bit of your hand in there, it's going to really hurt. So don't do that either. <laughs> Just going to nibble it now. Ah, we go. That's it. That was the ticket. That was the nibble that broke the camel's back. Broke the camel's nobble. Look at that. Yes, we're getting into the, the heart of the component there. And I'm just looking around, making sure I haven't munched off anything else that I shouldn't have. Good. Resistance is useless. Clear this deck a bit. Let's see what we can do with it. We might be able to just start now getting some heat straight onto that bad boy, straight through its die, but you know, we won't know till we try. Mm. Direct to die heating. It's a shame though, because we do still need to put this down and we've kind of lost our reference of where it's going to be a bit, but. Oh, look at that. It's taking solder now. The solder's flowing into that. Mm. Oh, it's gone, it's gone. There's our MOSFET of goodness. Woohoo! You can see how it was all glued on, basically, underneath in that packaging. Wicking away. That's the heat sink, wicking it all away, wicking away all our heat. And I just want to uh, clean that up. So you're going to need to do a decent job is probably some of this or ideally for a decent job get some decent desoldering wire not Rolson desoldering wire um, or if you're using Rolson desoldering wire get some flux on it which I don't have which I'm about to do because you can see it's just it's not particularly good if you can get flux coated 
it's way better and if you've got any flux coated to donate to me I wouldn't say no I really uh, could do with some but I've just not been able to find one I've liked for a long while God, it's taking all the heat our flux coated wire is now becoming uh, part of this this board note to self get bigger soldering iron for this type of job yeah, good. That's looking pretty good. And we'll just clean up those last two little feet prints. And we'll just anything else we can get while we're here. Still wicking. Oh, it's stuck again. Come back to me. Come back to me. There we go. And we'll just do a last once over. Check the board. We want it kind of smooth if we can. Yeah, that's looking good. Right. Quick clean. And then we'll look at our new component there. Let's get that down there. Again, my flux clean is really knackered. It does seem to be a tiny amount in it, but it's really losing its propellant or lost its propellant. So I'm going to going to have to invest in more flux clean or if you've got recommendations I'm happy to hear them so that's the footprint right there and you notice I didn't clean the footprint for our electrolytic capacity yet because I don't think we're going to have a massive issue with it but you never know so the difference between a through-hole component and a surface mount one is of course the legs and you can see it doesn't quite want to fit because well, it's too long in that dimension and also it's got this extra pin. Now because it's got that extra pin we'd have to check electrically. I just want to double check again electrically we are the same and a bit tricky of course because we don't have the old component but if we want to just put it onto continuity, um, yes. The heat the sinky part and the middle pin are the same and that's kind of what we guessed would be the case but fortunately we're, we are right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this bit off and I don't quite know how I'm going to do it. So let's just try first the brute force and ignorance way. We want to lop, lop it off basically underneath that circle. If we're going to try to mount this in the same place, um, again good luck how we're going to heat that up, I'm not sure yet. But if you wanted to, of course, you could try to just mount this and then put a normal heat sink that fits this on, but you're not going to be sinking to the case. So six or one, half a dozen of the other. And you could hear my knuckles pop in there. Whoa, okay. It ran across the room, but it did do it. <laughs> That's amazing. It sort of flew through the air, but slow enough that I could see it. I'm just going to trim the edges because I want to make it pretty, real pretty like. It's a real, you're a real pretty ladle. You're a real pretty ladle. <clears throat> okay. Tried to go a bit too far with the old cut in there. There you go, that's quite nice. Okay. Now we have to get it to fit. So we know we don't need the two center, uh, sorry, the two, the one center pin. So what we're going to do is, I think, I'm going to bend it down out of the way. And then with some side cutters, I'm going to try to get in there and just lop it off real close. Yeah, there we go. Real close like. So now we've got, we basically turned it into a two pin device. Ignore the uh, beeping, that's the uh, robotic sentry system going mad. So what we need to do then, we need to get a sort of nice, the correct sort of angle on this, the correct sort of dog leg focus and how are we going to do that I'm going to put it on the deck and I'm going to bend it straight down like that yeah okay and then I'm going to have to get another bend in because it's a sort of compound bend and it's going to be a bit trickier but not massively tricky which is something like that one because then I'm going to pull it out slightly from the package so yeah and you can see that right there you see could have done with a bit shorter that way, but I guess can't choose this. I mean, we are trying to do something a little naughty here, aren't we, at the end of the day. 
So I'm just going to pop that in, line it up, and see. We want to kind of kill these at that point. We don't really need them any longer than that. So I'm just going to get me snippers and just shape these ever so slightly, a bit more how I want them. Let's have a look, see how that looks. C spot run. And that to me, focus, focus. There we go, thank you, thanks for joining us. Um, looks the business, it is the bee's knees. So we just need to solder that down. And then you're saying to me, how the heck are you gonna solder that bad boy down on the back? Um, yeah, that's gonna be a tricky, a tricky, tricky fish. To, to pin down, mix in some metaphors there. It's a fish, it's something to pin. Um, I'm gonna go for the old solder paste here. And I'm gonna just, because I think it's gonna, it's the only thing we've got really that's gonna, a chance. It's got the flux and it's got the solder, so it's got two lots of good stuff in there. The only bad thing is if I can get it out. And I'm not joking. When, I, when you hear me go, I'm really forcing that tap that's not going maybe the old nozzle maybe the old nozzle's blocked yeah there's a bit in there it's coming out the uh, the sort of end of the tube so what i could do is just butter this actually let's just butter this and oh that's lovely that's gorgeous it's a gorgeous amount there it's way too much but look just put a smear don't put that I do the same with heat sinks, it's just way too much. Just a smear. Don't do what I just did there. Uh, I'm going to wipe off the excess. So, if you've got the old solder paste in a jar, apparently you can buy it like in a jar. I've not had it in that format, but that could be a good way of doing it. And I've got a bit of spare, so I'm going to put the spare on those two little legs, but they're easy to add more later. And we're going to use our kind of rubbish tweezers, we should just use the good tweezers for that and plop that kind of approximately where, let's get the good tweezers out, yes, we have them, yes we have them. So this could be uh, a component where we could apply the hot air, in fact I suspect it will be, but let's just see if we don't have hot air what you can do if you're doing this at home. It may well be this is just not a home repair, I mean at this point you're asking yourself, probably, um, if you've bitten off more than you can chew, I should think, if you're ready, get this far in. But I'm just going to apply some regular solder there to those two legs that are so happy to be soldered, because um, they're sticking out, just like that. Those were easy. But what I'll do, I'll show you, as I'm holding the, uh, I'm adding a bit of extra solder, and as I'm holding it, that you'll note is it still bubbling it's bubbling it's bubbling you might see that bubbling 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 I'm just holding it and holding it holding it. so I want that heat to go you know into the whole package there so that's it now that's locked down it's amazing actually I'm at 480 this is set to but that isn't even warm so I'm just going to try to do the end now here and if I can feed it in there's maybe a chance that it'll just start to flow you never know it does happen from time to time flow instant instant suckage it's just sucking the heat out I'm gonna hold it there as long as I can anyway come on the soldering iron is actually down to 471 at the uh, the measured, wherever the measuring point is. It's if, if This thing is like treacle. Come on, get that heat in there. Yeah. Okay. Come on now. Amazing. Right, so that's no good. 
I mean, it's good enough. It's good enough for our test, so let's not worry about that. It's good enough for our test. What we want to do, though, is really crack on because we want to test the whole um, electrolytic capacitor. So, uh, looking now for a solder sucker. This is a one I haven't tried. Ooh, very big hole in the end of that solder sucker. That's the biggest solder sucker hole I've seen. I had a, an idea about solder suckers and that was actually to stick a bit of silicone tube on the end because silicone is a bit less melty than whatever most of these cheapo ones have. It might be a good one for this because this hole is so massive. Oh that was a good one. That one actually cleared out completely. Let's try this one again. No. And Tilo, if you're watching, I refuse to get the electric solder sucker out for a single thing. I'd rather put more solder in the hole and try again. Yeah, there you go. Good. It's just starting to feel quite warm now. So we're going to take our component and we're going to bend the leads like the uh, bit that came off it was. So I'm going to put the label up though the same way and I'm going to bend them down pretty much the same way as well. That's good. Let's get the length the same. It's good. It's nice to have a guide. Um, so it's about, I'm just going to guesstimate it. It's about there and it was about there. Let's see how far off I was. Yeah, 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 that's pretty good. Right, so p positive to that back side, negative to the front. Oh, hmm. A little bit miscalculated, but that's fine. They're sitting okay now. And these are going to be quite easy to solder from the top. Again, make sure you've got plenty of heat going in on the joint. Tiny bit of solder and then just wait, 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 keep waiting, waiting. Wait longer and then pile some more in. And that's going to be fine. I'm going to do the same on the other one. Wait, wait, wait. Pile it in a bit more. I just remembered my soldering iron was set to a really high temperature, so it's doing well on that. It wasn't, it wasn't struggling. So I'm just going to put away some of these bits, clear the deck. So I think we can certainly put this in our test rig now. Now we didn't see it doing the flickery flackery stuff before, so that's uh, we're not off a, we're not off to a good start with our test because our baseline was actually so good. Um, but we've certainly changed the two main components here, and it'll be interesting to see if it works at all. So, three, two, one. Yeah, there you go. It's coming on. The lights are on. It's buzzing away. Just to show you without touching anything, I don't want to get electrified. So that's good, isn't it? All that remains is for me to leave it there and see what's going on. And actually, and at this angle, I can actually, just through the sideways motion, I'm going to show you, I can actually see some of the PCB. So I'm just going to turn that on and show you that. Fuck it, if I may, if the FLIR activates. It does have this thing where it says plug in your FLIR 1, even though it is plugged in. It's just, come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Just pop this out because it does actually feel quite warm now, which is good, which is interesting. Again, let's see which parts are warm. So I'm going to cover over the visual camera a bit because it's sort of weird. 50 degrees on the coil. And then everything else is looking a okay. So the coil by far is the warmest part in this operationally, it seems. But there you go. So that might be it. I don't know till I run it for a longer term. Um, but yeah, I might just go put that in a vehicle actually itself and see what's going on. And uh, if I figure out a better way of getting that down um, a bit further, I will. But to be honest, that's probably good enough right now. I mean, that's got that big bit on the top probably sinking enough into the uh, board. And uh, yeah, this whole you know repair just cost us a few pennies, so no big deal anyway. 
Hope there's been of some use to you. Please like, share, subscribe, and of course, please, please comment down below. And as ever, thank you for watching. Thank you.